Sennheiser are well known in the audio world for their premium and well refined offerings. Their PC350 and PC360 gaming headsets were popular products, bringing together the worlds of premium audio and gaming with a microphone inclusive headset. Now Sennheiser are back with the Game Zero and Game One headsets, taking over as their prime gaming audio offerings. On the inside, not much has changed. The exterior design though is markedly different. On hand, I have both headsets in the black and red colorway, and you'll notice for the most part, they're quite similar. I personally find the Zeros to be superior, however, in quite a few ways. The Game 1 headset is padded with a different, firmer feeling type of foam, and is wrapped in a fabric-y mesh. This feels okay, and it might suit those who get hot and sweaty whilst gaming a little better, as it won't stick to your skin as much, however, I much prefer the padding found on the Zero headset. Here, you'll find a much softer, dual-layered memory foam that's wrapped in a softer-touch leatherette. To me, this feels significantly more comfortable, both across the headband over my head, and especially on the ear cups themselves. The frame and arms are different too. On the one headset, they're quite standard, using a sturdy plastic that can slide up and down in one direction and feels quite cheap if I'm honest. Onto the Zero headset, you get a rubberized aluminium slider, which connects to a steel connector marked R or L for right and left and allows the entire ear cup to swivel almost 180 degrees, as well as fold up, the combination of which allows the ear cups to fold away small and flat for travelling, and for storage in the included carry case. On both headsets, a pair of arms extend downwards to hold the ear cups themselves, and allow them to tilt up and down so they sit on your head just right. Thankfully, both headsets feature a small rubber pad on both sides to stop the plastic on plastic knocking when you move them around. They also include a handy volume wheel on the right hand side. Both headsets also feature the same noise cancelling microphone, which is not removable, but it does fold upwards and automatically mute when you do so. Both headsets also feature a removable 3 meter braided cable with a split end, and also come with an additional cable that ends in a single jack for console gamers. The middle of the arm is able to be moved in shape so you can wrap it around in front of your mouth, and I found that was a really good length. The quality of the mic recording is very good for a gaming headset, as you'd expect from Sennheiser, and I've used it to record this section of the audio. The noise cancellation works well too. I'm leaning in and out of my open PC with fans spinning full ball and it does a pretty great job of tuning that out, as you can hear right now. The sound performance of both headsets is good. Sennheiser good. The difference in sound between the two headsets stems primarily from the fact that the Zero headset is a closed design, whereas the One headset is open. The venting on the One headset is through these lines around the Sennheiser logo, where there are ribbed rubber on the Zero. Hmm. Never thought I'd be saying ribbed rubber in a review. The Zero certainly offer a more isolating experience, which in my opinion is certainly desirable. I can't imagine many gamers actually want to hear the ambient noise going on around them when gaming, and I know when I do, I just pull one ear cap halfway off my ear. The open design of the One headset does make the sound come through with a little more space and openness, but the Zeros already do a good job of creating a pretty wide soundstage. Now the actual sound from both headsets is excellent. It's very clear and accurate over a broad range of sounds, and they certainly aren't limited to just gaming. Sennheiser don't supply any accompanying software to allow you to play with profiles and EQ etc, but I paired them with my Sound Blaster XG5 external amp and DAC and they were even better once I was able to tune them to first person shooters, music, movies and more. Overall, I liked both headsets, but I much preferred the Game Zero headset which is designed more for PC gamers. Despite the similarities in design, the Zero felt and looked much more premium in my opinion, and the design differences all favour this headset over the Game 1. I much preferred the memory foam and leatherette combo, but I suppose that could be subjective. What I don't think is subjective however is the vastly superior design of the headband and ear cup arms, which allow the Zero to be folded away into a compact size, as well as sit flat around your neck and on your desk. The sound quality of both headsets is great too, however I also preferred the more immersive experience of the closed design Zero headset. Neither headset is in the budget category, with the game Zero coming in at $175 US dollars or $279 Australian dollars, and the game one a little lower at $150 USD or $239 Australian dollars. If you can manage the extra doll hairs, I'd personally recommend the game Zero over the game one any day, but if you're unsure then perhaps find a retailer where you can see and feel the difference in front of you. To me though, it's night and day. Let me know what you think of Sennheiser's game headsets in the comments, check out our website at hardwarenbox.com, and I'll see you guys next time.